Hey guys and welcome to the first of a couple of videos that we'll be releasing to discuss the Unit 6 Website Development Assignment 1. In this we're going to be looking over things such as design principles and where these design principles have been applied to certain websites. Firstly we're going to look at the golden ratio or the golden mean or the Fibonacci number. This Fibonacci number is 1.618. The golden ratio has been applied to many things within design and architecture. Golden ratio can be seen in the Parthenon building in ancient Greece and also can be seen in the design of the Apple iPod in its early stages. Within web development, we use the golden sequence to help us work out where our containers and content will be placed on our website. We're now going to look at Hick's Law. Hick's Law is a principle that suggests that the more information or more choices you provide to a user, the longer it takes for them to process this and then for them to make a decision. This can be true of any website where you've got lots and lots of content. As you can see from this example here, the more information that's provided, the chances are the person's just going to navigate away and find another website. We then move on to Occam's Razor. Occam's Razor is a principle where we try to find the middle ground between giving too much information or too much detail or too little detail. We're now going to look into the use of white space. White space is a very contentious element within the web development circles, as white space can be used to effectively promote an object or an area within the website, or it can lead to confusion in certain areas, suggesting that there's elements that are missing or that may have not loaded. A classic example of effective use of white space is Google, where you go on their homepage. Google's search page provides the simple element of a search box in the middle of a page, and all of the other elements navigation are dotted around the outside periphery of the web page. The white space allows the user to be drawn to the middle of the page where they're going to be using their search bar. This is a very effective piece of design that's been applied by Google as it makes sure that the person that is using the website is focused on what they need to do. We're now going to look at some of the usability issues that we need to consider when we come into design and looking at the design of web pages. Web pages need to be usable by all sorts of people be them able-bodied or those with a disability. One such disability that's quite commonplace is colour blindness. Colour blindness can affect 1 in 12 men and 1 in 200 women. In the UK it's common practice for children to undertake an Ishihari test. This test is where an image is shown to the child with a number made up of small round dots in different colours. The colours are representative of the areas where colour deficiencies can happen. In this segment of the video, we're going to look at what it is like for a colorblind person to see when they're looking at a rainbow of colors. Here you can see that a green deficiency, notice the colors look more yellow and blue. This is known as deuteronomes. People with a blue deficiency will see more red in their image. This is known as tritinopia. Here we can see that people with a red deficiency see more yellows and blues. This is known as protonopia. What this illustrates is the need for consideration when we're choosing our colour sets and themes inside any website we're developing for any clients or for any user. Now we're going to look at the target audience. Any website that's created has a target audience, whether we realise it or not. This has been considered by the designer and the developer of the actual website. So certain design principles may have been applied to the target audiences that they're trying to target. So firstly, let's look at what sort of target audiences that there may be. Social networkers, you have gamers, people that buy things, and also we need to consider different people of different genders or age profiles. So our target audiences can be quite broad. We need to think about what their user requirements are as a user. Think about your experiences of going onto a website. You want to be able to find the information as quick as you can, as easy as you can. So things like being user friendly and keeping consistency is very important when it comes to the design of any website. Making sure that our navigation is consistent and a clear and easily labelled navigation for a user to find their way through your site. Allowing your site to have some element of customization for the users can be a benefit. Areas where people may have a disability issue for things like visual impairment, customization would be a very important and vital tool within your website. And finally, flexibility. Most websites of this generation are now what is known as mobile responsive. 
This means that they're able to react to the device that they're being viewed on. So having flexibility to the platform that they're being presented on is very important. We're now going to move on to the area of search engine optimization. This is a very big area in the industry and actually there are jobs specifically based around this area. Whenever websites are created we need to make sure that they are full of keywords that allow our websites to be indexed by the big search engines. This can be done by the use of meta tags. Meta tags allow us to provide information to the browsers that load any of our web pages as to the content that's likely to be on them, who's created them, the sorts of type of genre of website that it is, and a plethora of other information that can allow your website to be ranked high in Google or Bing. It's important that websites are updated often. Search engines don't like content that doesn't change for a period of time. It's suggested that websites that haven't had an update of information may be obsolete and therefore the ranking is pushed down. The use of limiting of crawling on your website is useful as well as this can stop unnecessary bots from indexing your website. The limiting of web crawling is very useful for any web developer. When we create our websites and we place them onto a web server, we may find that our bandwidth is limited. If we have web bots crawling all over our websites, indexing everything over and over and over again, we may find that this actually consumes quite a lot of our bandwidth. We're able to limit the amount of crawling that happens over our site by creating a simple file that we place on our web server. 